Okay, so time is already 10, Finnish time, 9 Norwegian and Swedish time, and uh, we should start our webinar. So hello and welcome to our webinar, uh, My Story Project webinar, Strategic Storytelling and Content Marketing. Uh, my name is Natalia Pulaka, and I'm a project manager at Lapland University of Applied Sciences in Tonio. My name is Otilia. I am uh, the Norwegian project leader and I usually work for Harti Business Hage, Lanaringshage in Storslet, northern Norway. Yes. Um, we are so glad to see all of you. I mean, we see your names and I can see that some of you probably attending our webinar for the first time. So I would like briefly, uh, I would like briefly introduce the project. Uh, so my story uh, project is based on the project Our Stories and focuses on supporting small-scale tourism companies in becoming um, more visible uh, by using digital storytelling as a marketing tool. So within the project, we are providing, organizing the business support program and provide support uh, on such topics as uh, finding a co-story, company co-story, digitizing a story and marketing the story through digital channels. And of course, uh, within this support program, we also organize a series of uh, open webinars. Uh, and aim of this webinars to provide competence and knowledge uh, related to digital storing, storytelling and business development. Yeah, and as you might have guessed, this is the first webinar of the series and uh, there will be three in total. Each of them will highlight a different aspect of how to build a content marketing strategy and how to work with strategic storytelling. And today's topic or today's webinar will start out with an introduction to the topic by our expert Ingrid Langhelle. She will introduce herself more later. And um, with her, we will be looking at why we need to actually work and concern ourselves with storytelling and why we need to rethink the way we think about marketing a little bit. And afterwards, we will jump right into the practical details. We'll work with customer profiling. Um, we will work with how to create content that is um, right for your different audiences online. And during the last 15 minutes, um, we will then go for a crash course in uh, the digital audience analysis, how we can pinpoint which audiences we're meeting online, where we are meeting them, and how we can find out if they're actually enjoying the content and which content they might be enjoying. All right. Uh, yeah, and uh, before we start, uh, just a few things I would like to mention. So <laughs> this webinar, as usually, uh, is automatically recorded, and the recording will be sent to your email address after the webinar ends. Also, we will ask you to share your experience and your opinion about, about this webinar and its content. So um, during the um, presentation, when the speaker will be sharing the presentation, uh, you can download um, the slides. Uh, so what else? Uh, there might be 15 seconds delay. It depends on the browser you are using uh, and uh, the device, so if, for example, you are uh, some mobile phone. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, yeah, and of course, you already know this chat box, so you can freely chat there and please put your questions uh, to the chat box. And uh, at the end of each presentation, we will go through all these questions. Yeah, so Attila, should we start? Yes, let's do yeah. that. And, and we invite Ingrid. To the stage and Ingrid present herself during her presentation. Welcome. Thank you. Should I just share my presentation? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see here. Um, good morning everyone and uh, welcome to this webinar in strategic storytelling and content marketing. My name is Ingrid Langhal as uh, they mentioned. Um, and I'm originally from a small island on the western coast of Norway. Um, and I have quite a creative background, studied theater, did competitive dancing, and somewhat and somehow ended up in London studying creative writing on a bachelor level for three years. So again, very, very creative. Uh, well, I like to think of myself at least, and very into this storytelling aspect. Um, 
of course, I figured out London was a little too expensive, so I moved back to Norway. Um, and then I decided I needed to do something sensible. So what sensible thing could I do? Well, I decided I could go to Northern Norway and study tourism, because that sounded like a very uh, safe and good way to go at the time. Um, so I went to move to Alta, first did a bachelor in Korea, Arctic Adventure Tourism, and then I also did a Master in Tourism Studies. And of course, I still wanted to work with my creative background. And so I thought, okay, what kind of uh, creative uh, way can I use tourism? And it immediately made sense to me to work with marketing. And of course, using storytelling in marketing. And I also specialized myself within uh, storytelling towards specific target audiences. Um, during my master uh, studies, I also got a um, job at Creative Industry, which is the company that I work for now. And for Creative Industry, I work as a digital content creator and marketeer. Um, and I do a lot of fun things here. Of course, I work with a lot of storytelling uh, on different levels, um, be it with the brand strategy, uh, working uh, like up close with how to use the story of the of the company and the individuals in the business uh, as a way to differentiate yourself in the market. Of course, also with concept development and product development. I also work with a lot of website content. Again, creative writing background. It's natural for me to work with uh, text. Uh, also in content marketing, creating content and helping brands and businesses create their content. Before I go on to the topic of today, I'm just going to introduce my company uh, briefly. Uh, again, we are in Alta and in Hammerfest, actually, we have, we're called Creative Industries. We have a total of nine employees, so we're quite big. Uh, and our, I think our strength as a company is the diversity of our employees. We have so many, so many good people who are competent in different areas. Uh, and that's why we can work also with different areas in within, of course, business development, which is the core of our company. So we work with everything from digital marketing uh, to recruitment to like really, really heavy strategy stuff. And we also do actually a lot of courses or webinars in uh, digital marketing specifically, but also other subjects. And we've done a lot of uh, uh, courses, webinars across from Norway for the last three or four years, I think, um, and it's been a lot of fun. So, uh, of course, I introduced myself, but I'd like to know who is with me today. So if you could just maybe briefly introduce yourself, who are you, what brings you here? And uh, also nice for everyone else to know who is here, because, uh, of course, we're talking about storytelling you need to share a bit of yourself. So if you can just uh, use the chat um, and introduce yourself, that would be nice. Katja from Visadalta. Hi, Katja. I know her from uh, uh, Northern Norway Tourism Board, where I was an intern, actually. Very lucky to be there. Um, yeah. Just keep typing. And while you're doing that, I'm just going to show you today's agenda. Um, and I'm really hoping that you can, as my colleague Andreas usually says, uh, warm up your fingers, because I would love if you could be very active in the chat today. Um, we have also Petra from a reindeer and wilderness enterprise near Levy. Very nice. And Kubishos uh, with Katarina. Yeah, it's really nice to meet you guys. Uh, I'm just, I'm going to read through all of the companies uh, as uh, after uh, I've been, or as I'm do, you guys are doing tasks. Anyway, so we're starting today with digital marketing, creating a bit of foundation as to why I'm talking to you guys here today and why content marketing matters. Um, and then I'll move on to target audiences or why it's also important to know your customers and how to think about your customers, maybe in a different way to what you used to. 
of course, then I'll go into the topic of content marketing and later focusing in on storytelling as a tool, which is, of course, my favorite. Uh, at last, I hope to leave you with some like strategic methods to make your life easier as, uh, as you're making content for social media. Lovely meeting you guys. So um, usually uh, when I'm using this, it's a PowerPoint slide and it's kind of, I, I like to ask you guys, could you guys imagine uh, 20 years ago uh, that this would be a way to advertise your business? Uh, it's pretty crazy. It's just a picture of some hashtags which did not even exist 20 years ago. It's quite, uh, quite strange how things have changed, I would say. And this change is a part of what we in the business uh, calls uh, the changing paradigms. And of course, changing paradigms sounds like a very, very like heavy expression, but it's, it's not so complicated in real life. It just basically means that the normal, what is normal has changed. So what I mean with that is like 20 years ago, when I would say I was quite young, so I don't remember much, but then people would go to their local travel agency if they wanted to go somewhere. And the local travel agency would help them out uh, with everything, basically. And they would, yeah, and they would pick specific locations based on who they were in contact with. However, these days, if I want to travel somewhere, say warmer, like, the south of France, uh, I would go into Google on my phone, most likely by myself and just book the planes, do the research, do book the hotels, look up the restaurants, everything I would do myself because we have become our own digital travel agency in this new digital world. And of course that comes with a lot of opportunities, but it has also got a lot of challenges attached to it. Because of course, well, maybe earlier you would just have a select few companies that your travel agency were in contact with. Um, these days we're all kind of on the same shelf. So you can, if for example, if I go to, I Google Trumsa or if I Google Alta or Levy, um, all the companies or hopefully all the companies, depending if they are online, will show up kind of along the same line. So you have everyone is being compared next to each other. And of course you have to fight your way to the top. And what that means is you have to look good to grab people's attention because we have high expectations when it comes to what we find. When it comes to brand, is it a clear brand? Do you know who you are? Uh, is the design looking good? And of course, visual identity all of this needs to look good. Um, and first impressions matter a lot, be it in Google, in, on Facebook, Instagram, TripAdvisor, wherever they find you, what you have about yourself or your company should look good. Um, and of course, most of where we find uh, people or companies or people find us is on social media. And of course, with social media, it's, a lot of different expectations. And of course, it's all about the stories, which I will get back to later. Now, this is an example that we use a lot uh, for our digital uh, marketing courses, again, that we do across Norway. Um, and the reason why we use Quick Lunch, which is a very famous Norwegian chocolate, as an example, is because it's something that I think almost all Norwegians are familiar with. So we usually ask our Norwegian audience, what kind of associations do you have with quick lunch? What comes to mind? And it's usually the same. It's Easter, maybe it's skiing. Most likely it's something related to outdoors and going outside. And the reason for that is that Freya, the company that owns quick lunch has been working on their story um, and tied it to really the Norwegian identity, the Norwegian soul for many, many years uh, in a way that has really imprinted, imprinted it in our minds. 
Um, and as you see here on the left side, it's an example of way back how long they have been <laughs> working with this. Uh, I'm, I know some of you don't know uh, Norwegian, but it says it costs 25 euro, and I cannot remember in my lifetime anything costing that little. So of course it's been a while. Uh, and then the other writing here is put it in your backpack. So again, here they're starting their storytelling, but it's a very different format to what we see today. However, let's focus first on this. It's in the newspaper. It's very much um, in the hands of the business. It's the business who is in power. Uh, they can just say they want this printed in one of the national newspapers and it will reach everyone or they could at the time. Um, and of course, that's where people got their news. So everyone would read it. They would, their reach would be huge. And perhaps that is some of the benefit that Quick Lunch or Freya had. That's why maybe why they managed to imprint it, imprint it in so many minds. However, um, then you, can, you still have to tell that story uh, to make it work. And also a benefit they had uh, was that, of course, you don't have any dancing monkeys or singing cats uh, or such uh, like we have today. However, it probably would not work anymore. This, it's too much text. It's not really, yeah, it's, it's too much information and too little storytelling. And this commercial on the left, no, on the right, sorry, <laughs> is a modern one. And it's, usually it's moving, uh, but since I'm sharing a PDF, it's still, but it says the forest costs nothing. Uh, and then you can't see it here, but it has a little quick lunch uh, symbol on it. And that's how things are working out today. And again, it's, slight, it's supposed to move slightly, and it's a very, very different way of uh, advertising your, uh, your product than it was before. Back in the days with newspapers, you have a lot of information, but here you just really have this slightly moving video. And again, for a zero corner. And the reason, of course, that Quick Lunch can do that is because they're building on their brand story of Quick Lunch. They're using uh, the storytelling that I've been working on for many, many years. And the reason why they have to do it so different is because, of course, uh, when we're on a phone, uh, we can choose nowadays how long we're going to watch an ad or if we want to watch it at all. The power is all in the hands of the consumers. And it's those people or the, that you want to reach, you have to catch their attention. And it's not so easy with all those dancing monkeys and such. So some things were easy before. However, now it's uh, much more easy to hit the right people if you just know what you're doing, of course. And just going to kind of uh, point out again that social media is a very, very different platform to the, like, the normal, traditional marketing platforms. Like, maybe the newspaper or even TV, because we have very different expectations. We expect uh, the content to be similar to what the other content is, which is, again, focused, it's focused on entertainment and information. If you take nothing else from this webinar, I want you to remember that. But the content you have on social media that you as a business post, you should think of entertainment and information, because that is what people seek when they come there. And it's also about building your brand and building relationships with your customers. And that takes time, even though sometimes we want it, everything to happen really quickly, you have to think the slow, uh, slow way, the, the tor turtle, not the hare. And of course, um, we as customers have also evolved um, and again, it's a power, the power is in the hands of the customers, be it how long they want to watch a video or, or a post. We actually spend only 2.4 seconds on each post that we see on Facebook, for example, which is not a lot of time to catch someone's attention. 
And of course, uh, you also have business reviews online, which can, you know, make or break your business. So it's important to keep people happy. And people are impatient. They don't want you to waste their time. So you need to find the right kind of content that will appeal to them. And they are increasingly self-centered. They don't want anything that, you know, don't, doesn't appeal to them that they don't find entertaining or informative. And so you need to be aware of what your specific customers want to be able to succeed. Now, I know some of you have already done this, um, but I want you guys to, as a preparation for the next part, describe your dream customer, other than obviously rich, as we probably all want. Um, why do they come to you and what are they interested in? Um, please share in the chat. You have five minutes, so until 9.26. And um, Petra says, a truly interested one, not superficially ticking off bucket list and we find a common language. I think that is a very, very good point. We are, I think we all want someone who actually cares uh, about what we're doing, of course. And Pai, person who enjoys to be back in the roots. That's also a very nice way of saying it. And uh, I need to say that you're also supposed to use this customer that you're writing down now as a foundation for the next task that we're doing. Uh, Maria, uh, sustainable tourism is something we focus on and our dream, uh, uh, I'm just gonna, uh, our dream customer is engaged in this aspect and experiencing our region from that standpoint. Pella as my customers are business owners rather than consumers. My dream customer is a passionate and curious entrepreneur. Katarina, a dream customer from my design business, the one who wants to enjoy in the creative process. That sounds really cool. Wants to brainstorm and develop the idea this one step further than usual. That sounds so cool. Um, and Katya, curious about our way of living so far north, first of all. I want to meet the locals, um, learn about us living here, cares about their footprints. Very good points too. Dream stakeholders, says Lena someone who is introduced in our events and really put a, put to account. Sinica, interested in nature, our way of life, our culture, fishermen and fisherwomen, or fisherwomen, says Ronald, who ha, ha want to feel real upland and fish in the river, where it's the world's biggest salmon, once in a lifetime. I think actually my boyfriend would probably very much like that. <laughs> uh, leave Reden, I like customers who buy local products from my shop. Of course, I think a lot of you are already are have very, very good um, kind of. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> my, my brain is frozen for some reason. I think you already uh, have a very good 
idea of a customer, just think taking it a step further, not just uh, mentioning demographics or anything, um, but actually think, yeah, just thinking about the customers and what they want. And that is a very uh, good foundation for what we're going to talk about next. Uh, we still have another minute if anyone else wants to share. Otherwise, I'll just move on to uh, the target audience bit. Thank you guys for sharing, by the way. I'm really happy to see that you're also active in the chat. It's going to be a fun day. Um, so, because the reason I'm asking you this and trying to make you think about kind of a bit further um, is because knowing your customer is essential to making or creating good content, both online and, of course, good products as well. And our customers can be quite different from each other based on both the business that we have, um, our region, etc. cetera. Um, but you need to think, uh, who are they and what are their, uh, what are their characteristics? Are they young and rebellious, older and more traditional, maybe older and rebellious? Uh, do they come to you because they love nature? Do they come to you because uh, they're interested in your culture? And maybe they're specifically interested in your heritage culture. And of course, are they traveling with family? Are they traveling with friends? All these things play into how uh, they travel and what they choose to do. And how, of course, you should interact with them. Now, I briefly mentioned Northern Norway Tourism Board, uh, where Katja has worked before. Uh, and I hope I can represent their uh, travel styles as this is called, uh, accurately. And I think this is a very, very good tool to use. I'm sure you're all familiar with customer segmentation in some form, be it demographic or psychographic or different ways of splitting customers into different groups. But I'm very familiar with this, and I think it's a very good tool that Northern Norway Tourism Board has developed. And what they have done is to split their customers that come to or the travelers that come to Norway, uh, Northern Norway specifically, into five main categories uh, based on their motivation to travel. And so, of course, you need to have the, the uh, icons of the North or the people who are chasing the big attractions like North Cape, the Northern Lights, the Midnight Sun, etc. Then you have the people who come for the culture. And of course, culture can be many different things. Culture in general is what drives them. And then you have, you can't go to Northern Norway without having someone who's interested in nature, of course, because we have so much of it up here. And so the third category is nature, interested uh, travel style. And of course, some people also travel just to be together, be it with their friends, their family, uh, maybe even work colleagues. Etc. So the fourth category is those who want to be together, togetherness. And at last, you have uh, the fifth category, which is more of someone who's seeking some inner peace, maybe looking more inwards rather than outwards, seeking something uh, for themselves, for the mind, maybe for their body, etc. Again, five main categories. And then within these categories, uh, you have something called personas that we work with quite a lot in our business, actually, um, in different forms. Not necessarily just these, but we sometimes make our, our own personas for the businesses. And what a persona is, is a characterization of a dream customer. Basically, you're trying to picture a human being rather than a number. For example, it's uh, instead of... Uh, I'll take an example from one of the personas here. Instead of saying uh, maybe a German, Germans, uh, German man aged uh, 20 to 40, uh, you will say uh, someone who is interested in challenging themselves, uh, eat and Niklas in nature, uh, being someone who likes to push themselves uh, and then relax afterwards. So you're kind of giving them uh, characteristics of a person and by doing that 
you're kind of making it easier for you to create both products and market towards them. So each of the personas within these categories will have specific things that they care about, uh, that they dislike, and ways of communicating with them. So it's kind of you have a recipe in a way or a foundation for talking to them uh, effectively. And also, of course, creating products. And again, I think it's a very useful tool to have uh, to see picture more of a person rather than a number or something else that you segment based on. And sometimes you can uh, combine uh, some uh, personas or some uh, travel styles. Like for example, you can have a family that loves to do things outdoors together, or you can have families that love to uh, explore culture together. But it's a very, again, useful tool for imagining a customer that you can actually work with. So I would highly recommend uh, looking into this further too. Um, to kind of trigger your brain uh, a little more, I have an example from Camp Ripon in Kiruna, uh, where they are actually promoting the same, uh, the same spa, uh, but two different, I would say, customer segments. So I don't, you can maybe uh, let me know which ones you think, uh, or travel styles, I think is a better way, not personas, but travel styles. Uh, which do you think maybe are the um, recipient of this? The first one is just a picture of feet in a bucket, uh, probably with some gym, yeah, with juniper, uh, berries, salt, and palettes from the iron ore. Um, sounds lovely. Unless you hate feet, I'm sorry if you're seeing if you hate feet and seeing this picture. Uh, but just try to think, okay, who is the recipient for this? And then you have a very different picture where you have the writing is Saturday sauna, have a nice weekend. And you see these people enjoying themselves together. Now, I won't expect you to give me the answer. I'll give it to you quite fast. What I think is the travel style that um, these two posts uh, are aimed at. So I think the first one is aimed at someone who wants to relax, that cares about relaxing on their own, uh, getting maybe some peace of mind and just focusing on themselves a bit. However, I think that the other one is more of aimed at someone who wants to spend time together with someone else. Again, you can see uh, there are people here. It's about enjoying something together. Now, I want to challenge you for this one because uh, I think this is a post that can go in at least two different directions. And I want you guys to write in the chat, uh, which travel style is this aimed at? Just the travel style, not the personas. So this post, if you can see it properly, it just asks the question, how would you like to spend your September? Um, and then you can see uh, different pictures, of people in nature. So is it people chasing the big attractions? Is it culture lovers? people who are, want to uh, do something in nature, someone who wants to spend time together, or is it the people who are, want that inner peace? So I'm seeing that Maria is saying the great outdoors, and Antje is writing the great outdoors and togetherness, friends together, yeah? Um, anyone, uh, just keep writing in, guys, if you have any suggestions. It's, there is no correct answer to this, this necessarily. Um, but I just want you guys to kind of get on the vibe of thinking uh, in these terms. Um, I see a lot of people are uh, seeing, saying great outdoors and togetherness um, and actually a balanced lifestyle. I, I also like that idea, um, actually, because you can just get a lot of things from being out in nature. Um, but maybe that's a nature lover. Um, Nature lover, Antje says yes. Um, and I think this, uh, this, these images and this post could actually, as many of you have said, could also could be both the great outdoors and uh, the togetherness of friends together. Um, so it could be in different directions. Um, 
I think, and maybe it's a combination of these two. Thank you guys for sharing. So of course, again, underlining that knowing who you're talking to is very, very important. And that comes to all your content uh, needs to reflect who you're talking to. And I found this, uh, I think, in one of the companies that I was looking at. And I immediately, I think I've been brainwashed by my fish craze, fishing crazy boyfriend, but he would absolutely love this picture. Uh, and it's a great example of something that would hit a specific target audience, namely people who are really passionate about fishing. Uh, for example, if my boyfriend got this up, he would be like, ooh, that's amazing, cool, I want to go there. And then he'd probably look up uh, what else you had on your Instagram profile, maybe on Facebook too, if he was really interested. Um, but of course, uh, that, you, that means you also need to appeal to him with the rest of the content, because one post might not be enough. Uh, for example, you need to be aware of what your audience maybe don't like. For example, uh, and I'm not saying this was the case with this uh, post uh, or the surrounding posts, but if my boyfriend went on a page with where he saw first the salmon, uh, and then all the other posts were related to something entirely different, maybe a spa experience, he would probably not go to visit that company because then he could see, okay, that's that's not what I'm, I'm interested in. He wants to just stand in the river for like as, as many hours as he can and catch as many fish as he can. Uh, he's not interested in being in spa. Um, and that's important to know what kind of image the whole platform that you're using is giving to your customers. You need to know um, not just what they like to see, but what they do not like to see. What is the biggest motivation for them to choose specifically you, not your competitors? And of course, what could be a reason for them not to come to you? Could it be maybe as we are in the northern parts of Europe? Could it be the distance? Could it be uh, difficult to get to you, etc.? You need to be aware of these things, uh, not just what people like, but what you shouldn't show them as well. But of course, uh, you also need to be aware of where they're coming from. Because even though there, are, of course, we have these motivations that go across the national lines, but uh, we are also different. Even though Sweden, Finland, and Norway have a lot of cultural similarities, there are also differences. And those are differences that you guys need to be aware of when you are uh, marketing particularly towards your customers. You need to know what interests they have, um, and there are some slight differences between our countries. And of course, what platforms do you reach them on? For example, Instagram is not as big in Norway as it is in, for example, Sweden and Finland. And that is something to keep in mind when you are working with your target audience. Where did they come from? Um, but of course, it's you also need to know who you are, that is also part of telling your story, sharing your, you, yourself to your audience, even though it's always your audience that is at the main focus, but you need to have some awareness of who you are and dare to show yourself to the people that uh, are following you or that you want to come to visit. Because uh, people trust people, not businesses. So that's why it's important to in your post, share people rather than, I don't know, just if this was just a sled, that would not be as exciting as you seeing the whole family here uh, together with especially the cute dog. And you of course need to know yourself to be able to share your story to others. So these three things you need to uh, be in control of. What is your story, your business story? And what are your values? And of course, what makes you unique? So that is also something you need to be aware of. Now, into content marketing. And this, know, knowing your customer is a very important foundation because content marketing is all about the customer and not the product. So you're online to share something of value with your followers. You're not necessarily there to sell. 
even though that is what lies at the foundation of, of course, what you do as a business, but that should not be up here on the surface level. It should be rather down, down here. Um, cause it's about, again, it's a social platform. It should be about communication, not just selling. Um, and the value that you get as a business lies in the engagement that you get, that people are interested in your post, that they care about what you do. Maybe they share, like, and comment. That's best, but at least they remember you because uh, you did some, you created something that caught, caught their interest. And I think both these examples that I have on the site are a good example of a good content uh, that you can share with your businesses. Now, I don't know how clear it is for you, um, but it's uh, one of them is about World Mosquito Day. Now, I hate mosquitoes, but I think it's still interesting to learn that there is such a day. And of course, talking about how there are mosquitoes and cladberries in Finnmark and uh, asking questions, uh, asking people to share stories. Uh, and on the left, you have a legend of the white deer um, bringing a message, a divine message. All of these things are really, really interesting. And it's something of value rather than the business pushing uh, something to sell. And again, you have to be the turtle uh, in the race, not the hare, because that's how you win. Uh, you shouldn't expect an immediate return. It will come in time when you have built that relationship with your customers. So, but what are you going to talk about? That is, of course, the difficult question. Uh, and I would suggest to figure that out, you listen to your audience and to your customers. You engage with them, ask them questions, answer their questions uh, and comment in general. And through that, you can influence them, uh, of course. You create this connection with your customers. And a hot tip is to give tips, like this example uh, from Trigve, from a local company here in Alta, Blood Explorer. Uh, he's an expert on going across uh, great uh, mountain plateaus and skiing. Uh, and what he's giving his followers is uh, his knowledge about which skis to use. Because, of course, people watching are most likely not as competent in this area as he is. So he's providing his followers with valuable content uh, that he is an expert in. You can also uh, talk about great things that others are doing. Maybe there's something cool going on in your area. Uh, maybe even a competitive or a competitor. Uh, it's, it's all about building relationships. And again, the focus is not on uh, selling. Uh, Auntie, if you, if you just write down the question, I will answer it towards the end of the presentation. And that's for other questions too. Uh, um, and also talk about individuals uh, in your business. And that, those are the people who are making your business. It's the humans. Uh, why are they so special? What, why, what are they so good at? What are their talents? Or why did you hire them? Um, Etc. those kinds of things. And of course, people love to see what is going on behind the scenes. Uh, here in our business, in creative industry, we often use the stories function on our Facebook page uh, to share a little bit of what is going on behind the scenes. And it's, that's something I would recommend you guys to do too, uh, is to use that function. Uh, it's very fun. And you have to, of course, dare to put yourself out there, not like in a clownish way, but just to, um, yeah, just dare to, to show yourself. Because again, it's all about building a relationship to your customers. But of course, remember always, it's all about what your customer wants, not necessarily what you want to share. So you always have to go back and check it off the list. Is this something that my customer or my target audience cares about? Now, another task for you guys. Uh, I want you guys to create some value uh, or try to at least. So with your guests in mind or your customers, if you're uh, don't if you're not a tourism business that get guests, I want you guys to write down five things uh, related to the month of December or maybe Christmas. Lucky you, it was uh, a good season to write uh, valuable content for. Um, 
and of course, towards your specific target audience. Uh, think about what they would be interested in. Uh, and of course, you can write about something you love to do or create, to make, and this season, maybe some food, fun, no, food, sorry, <laughs> that you usually make now, some traditional food, etc. Uh, do you have any special talents, any, some traditions or customs, local facts? Uh, again, uh, aimed at your target audience and related to the month of December. Uh, and I have a couple of examples here. Um, so you have until 10 o'clock, or sorry, 11 o'clock to, uh, uh, for you guys, some of you, to uh, make, create five things of value. And I would love if you can share the, your favorite uh, with in the chat. <laughs> and yeah. And if you have any questions, I'm going to be here. So until 11 o'clock uh, in Finnish time and 10 o'clock in Norwegian time, uh, you can, you have um, to do this task. And I will think about your uh, question, Antje.
because um, seeing that Katarina you're saying is a difficult task, some sort of on the other side advertising my graphic help to the local tourism businesses, like an increase their visual coherence and visibility. Uh, I don't know how to approach it. Okay, yeah, I can understand. Um, but just maybe you can try to think um, what kind of uh, tips can you give them? That is, uh, of course, you have some general tips that I can use, but maybe you can relate them specifically to the season. For example, um, let's see, graphic help. Um, so point out the importance of uh, having a good graphic profile uh, when people are coming to you um, for the Christmas season or December, maybe. Um, just try to figure out how you can try to relate it to December, but just still uh, give some tips uh, that you can, that your customers can use. For example, we, uh, me and my colleague Andreas created a, a video, uh, well, a couple of videos recently, just with different tips relating to how to uh, film for using a mobile phone. Um, just, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be Christmas or December specific if, it, if you find it difficult, but just think what kind of value your customers can get from you. Uh, something like that. Again, going back to like Trygve talking about what kind of skis to use uh, when crossing the Finnmark uh, mountain plateau, etc. Those kinds of things. I hope that was helpful. <laughs> so just think about uh, what you have uh, of what your what your strengths or your what you are an expert on that could be helpful to your customers. No worries. And if anyone else has any questions, you just don't be afraid to ask. No stupid questions. And you have around four minutes left, maybe three soon. Uh, so just, yeah, try to finish what you're doing. And if you want, please, please share in, uh, in the chat. That would be lovely. Anna, uh, polar night, no lights, slowing down for the holidays, forgetting the stress of work life, snow, the magic of darkness, and light at the same time. I think all of those could be a very good foundation for content um, to talk about. Definitely. And I think those are the, that's kind of some of the reason why I love being up north is because of all those things, the beauty of it. I think December is a very beautiful month, even though you have the polar night. Um, see, Maria is sharing, engage in conversation with the locals and why they've chosen to live in the Arctic. What makes it great? I think that's a very good idea, actually, because I think to many who come from other, especially warmer countries, uh, it may be difficult to understand how people are actually living up here. So that's a very good direction to go to. And what is the Aurora Oval? I'm also curious uh, to what that is actually. And uh, so I would love to read, uh, see content about the Aurora Oval. I love that you mentioned the big contrasts um, 
alpine landscapes and summit sea and it's a very good good points because it is really a region of of the contrasts with the midnight sun and the polar night and everything kasia um telling me how we spend december to engage our dream guests uh purple is an advent color that is uh yeah that's a very good idea to share i think many might be surprised that in at least in norway that purple is the color we use uh, in the christmas month ah the northern lights belt from maria ah yeah i'm familiar with that maybe it's uh, <laughs> but as i like that they're calling it aurora oval that is a very nice name Now you guys have uh, one minute left. I mean, you don't have to share um, what you have written, but I would love love it if you do. Uh, I think we have a lot of things that we can also learn from each other, and maybe you can find inspiration in what others are writing to think. Maybe do you have a version of this that I can use? Thank you to everyone who is sharing. Uh, I think you all have some very good ideas um, that I can see and. I think just write it down for yourself and uh, and use it, really. Use it as a foundation for content. So, but I will just move on since we have to keep with the time and you can, uh, I think you're getting the slides after the webinar, I think. Um, I think, uh, yeah. So, but just a bit about content in general uh, before we move on to storytelling. Um, you need to think about the whole picture. Um, like every element, every post that you make is a part of your story. Again, going back to what I was talking about with the salmon, uh, the huge, really nice looking salmon. Um, think about the whole story you're telling. Everything you post should be a part of that, your story, or the story of your business that you want to tell. At the same time, you need to remember, don't focus on too many things at once. Even if you maybe uh, have different products, like maybe you do dog sledding, or maybe you take people hunting, uh, maybe you have a great restaurant, just make sure you focus on one thing at a time, because that way you will be able to uh, make that one thing shine. And then yeah, maybe you can talk about the restaurant in a separate uh, topic uh, or a separate post. Uh, give things, again, the light that it deserves. And again, uh, back to the giving people value. Of course, we as businesses, we also need to sell because we need to earn money. Uh, so 20% of the focus could be on sales, but um, preferably you have 80% of uh, the focus in your posts on social media would be a value. And this is something that we tell all of our customers uh, that ask about digital marketing. And of course, again, back to showing people, not products. Of course, you can show uh, people using products, but have those faces, you know? And um, be playful, dare to use the social media format. Uh, use humor. Of course, you need to make sure people understand your humor, but dare to be, you know, playful, have fun, and tell stories, which I'll get into even more soon. Um, and of course, quality over quantity. Some people feel like, oh, you just need to get stuff out there. But try to stop and think, OK, is this post, is this uh, content, is this giving my customers value? Is it right for my target audience? Is it part of the story I want to tell? Just take your time to um just consider things before you just send it off and surprise use the element of surprise i think that is a very good uh, thing to do is there something you can tell your followers that would be surprised to hear about you about the business for example i've explained earlier that i'm a very creative person dancing painting writing but i also love to go hunting and fishing and so that may be surprising to a lot of people that I actually have a hunting dog and I love to go hunting. Um, and when you're writing, I would recommend you write as if you're talking to a friend. Don't be too formal. 
be just um yeah more direct as if you would be talking to someone uh, that you care about now for storytelling my favorite uh part um, and why it's a useful tool to me and i will start actually with sharing a video and uh, that i think illustrates how you can use storytelling in a playful way to advertise for your business or in this place uh, a place actually so i'm going to try to share uh, my a video here and let me know if you can't hear it um, I will put it on. That's not a knife. That's a knife. <laughs> That's me. Brian Dundee. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? Why do you keep saying really? Nothing to see here, man. Just get a clean shave with my machete. See you next week, Barry. Yeah, when your dad did it, he was he was not okay. Well, my dad told me about this. He was just like, yeah, I just came up and they did it, they did this, okay? I just don't think he can see you from back here. Look at that! Not a lot of crocs out here, huh? It's a thirty-seven thousand miles of pristine, beautiful beach, mate. Did you know that Australia makes some of the finest wines in the entire world? No. Thank you very much. This isn't a movie. No. It's a tourism ad for Australia. Yes. But listen, you're the best crocodile Dundee since Crocodile Dundee. Really? Yes, really. And we had the best trip ever, didn't we? It was pretty sweet. <laughs> Now, again, I uh, this is a very fun way of, uh, um, I think at least, of using story the storytelling format to actually advertise a place. And of course, I don't expect any of you guys to have the budget of Australia. Like, I would love to be able to invite Chris Hemsworth to uh, do ads with me for our company. But unfortunately, uh, we don't have that kind of budget. But still, it's kind of, again, a fun way of using storytelling, literally, in uh, the advertising. And of course, you can play around with uh, that kind of thing in many different ways. And I don't necessarily expect you guys to take it that far. Uh, but it's just to show you how playful you can be. And of course, I just love using this video because I think it's very funny. Um, but getting back to storytelling as a tool, and I'll, I'd like to tell a tiny story uh, to illustrate uh, something that I found surprising about storytelling and the effect of it. Uh, when I was doing my uh, master thesis, I was interviewing a lot of tourists uh, from different parts of the world. And one couple that I met was from America and a guy, he was a realtor. And of course I was uh, dealing with storytelling subject and he got really, really excited about it. And he said uh, that that storytelling is something that he uses a lot in his business of selling properties. He actually told me this first line, which I'm gonna be as nerdy as to say, I have right here on my wall. Um, Facts tell, uh, stories sell. Um, and, and what he was telling me and that I just didn't, didn't realize until then is the value that even in such a business as real estate agents, uh, you can put add extra value to uh, something with stories. Um, I'll give you an example, of course. Um, imagine a listing for a house and you just have facts. That's, I mean, that's fair. You just list how many bedrooms, uh, how many bathrooms, etc. The how, how much space you have. And to some people, maybe that's enough. They don't need anything else. 
But of course, if you also add in the description that this house was uh, used during World War II to host refugees and this big hero uh, of the resistance um, hid there, obviously that story gives the house more value. And of course, we as humans, we love storytelling. Even our brains get uh, really happy from hearing stories. And the reason for that goes way, way back to ancient times when we were first starting to crawl out of our cages and discovering how dangerous the world was. Because of course, we use uh, stories to learn, to get inspired and entertain. But back then, it was very important to use stories to learn. Uh, and now again, an example. Uh, it's much easier to remember that wolves are dangerous if you tell in Instead of telling, oh, there are dangerous wolves in this area, you say, you know, my cousin and I, we were out uh, walking in the forest and suddenly there was a wolf that just came flying by and he ate my cousin. Of course, you might have more details than that, but of course, you're going to remember that much more easily than if someone just says, oh, yeah, there are dangerous wolves here. Again, we use storytelling to learn uh, and get inspired and entertained. And it makes our brains, it makes them literally light up because um, we love to listen and learn from others. And storytelling is something you can do, for example, to connect with your audience and to teach them some, uh, some things that you need to teach them. Now, I don't know if you can read it very clearly, but I really love this from example from only in Lapland, north of Finland, where they're writing, in autumn, many animals have only one thing on their minds, and it's not taking selfies with you. Let the reindeer whisper sweet nothings in each other's ears in peace. That way, there will be plenty of cute baby reindeer in the spring. The same goes for the birds migrating to the summer homes. It's a long, arduous journey south, so it's important to leave them in peace. So here, I mean, they could have just told people, oh, stay away from the reindeer. But instead, they're using storytelling, they're painting a picture that makes it both much more entertaining and uh, easier to remember uh, to what they're saying. And again, back to the building relationship with your guests, which is so, so important. Um, again, our brain gets this reaction it uh, you get, if you hit the right spot uh, with finding something in common with someone else, uh, your brain will actually release dopamine and oxytocin. So there's literally a chemical reaction that happens in the audience's brain if they find something that they connect with that you're posting. And that again goes back to, you know, seeing humans, not businesses, seeing something that they can recognize themselves in. Uh, which is very, very important. Just like uh, this picture here from Visit Alta, uh, someone, a child just uh, enjoying themselves in the snow, that's probably something that we can imagine most of the children we know uh, to do. Uh, and of course, many of us want to look perfect online, but it's actually more effective uh, to be a bit imperfect, to be human. I would say it's perfect imperfection to dare to not be this glossy exterior. And I think especially here in, uh, in Northern Europe, uh, we don't like those glossy American uh, images. So dare to be human and dare to be imperfect. Now again, finding things to talk about. And when I, I just like to say that when I talk about stories, I don't necessarily think fairy tale format like it started with this and then this happened and of course in the end it was like this that's not necessarily what a story is um in fact uh, i i would say again this example here uh can be a story uh, last night northern lights show and you see the pictures of course aurora borealis showed herself on the best her best side this weekend she really did a dance for us Northern Lights can be seen from September to March in the con if the conditions are right. So here you also have a combination of entertainment and information. 
and you're informing people at the same time as you're kind of telling a story of, again, the Northern Lights. Um, about, yeah, I'm just going to read from Katarina about the slide with the reindeer. You give an example of a beautiful story, but simultaneously the content should be short enough because you, as you mentioned, the beginning is just 2.4 seconds of active attention you get. That is true, but sometimes um, if you have the right kind of story, like the right beginning line, you can dare to have it uh, slightly longer. But we do recommend to only have three lines of text um, in general. So you are right, Katarina, but sometimes you can allow yourself slightly more room. Um, and of course, when again, when you're talking about telling stories, uh, think about the stories that you tell other people offline and try to take them online. Of course, not in a very long text. I really, I would not recommend to have much longer than this or the one on the reindeer slide. I think that would be about the max that you should have. Um, but you can, if you are a good enough storyteller, you can use that length of text. Um, and I'd like you guys to try to think of the little moments you can highlight, like things that uh, you find normal, but do you do? Like maybe some of you are really into taking ice baths um, or you have this traditional meal that you cook that is just, is so normal to you. You don't think of it as something special to others, but there's so many ordinary things to us that others find extraordinary. And those are the things you also can tell stories about and share it, something that is giving people value. And of course, I also talk about legends and the stories you've been told. And for example, when I came up here and learned you shouldn't wave something white to the moon lights because then it will take you away. Uh, so those things are really fun to learn and to share with, for example, your guests from across uh, the world. So that is something you can find to talk about, for example. Now, uh, we're coming into the last stretch uh, of this um, part, and we're ending a little more heavy with more of a strategic step. But I'd like to give you something that makes your life a little easier. Um, and it's what I would like to say, theming your content. But it really is packaging different part of your brand story, the core of who you are as a brand, uh, into these little themes that can make it easier for you to create content and easier for you to actually get your story and your brand out there. Now, when I mean story packages or themes, um, I like to kind of give you an example. And of course, themes can be many different things and they should definitely be specifically related to your story and your content um, or your brand. Uh, but this is an example of how you can have the same kind of subject, which is a rack of lamb, but you can use the theme to tell it a little differently. So, or use it in a different way. For example, here you have theme A, and it's behind the scenes that is kind of the theme here. And I would say you can have a picture uh, showing how the chef prepares, or just a picture of the chef preparing, the rack of lamb and say here the chef prepares a rack of lamb nothing more than that now for theme b uh, which is provide tips to give something of your expertise you can have for example a video where you actually show how the chef prepares the rack of lamb so you're taking it a step, step further instead of just show taking a picture you're actually giving something valuable to your customers or your audience. Now at last, uh, theme C is our story. And then you can have, for example, as I put here, a picture of uh, grandma with the grandchild. And uh, of course the text is the reason rack of lamb is on our menu is because our boss's grandma used to make it. Again, you have the same kind of uh, content or subject in a way, but you're using the themes to pull it in slightly different directions. And I hope that was clear to you. Um, now, because I have another task for you, the last task of today. I'd like you guys to try your hand 
at writing down content for the following themes related to your business. Um, behind the scenes uh, is the first one, provide tips, and of course, our story. And I like, again, if you want, you can share your favorite in the chat. I would be very happy if you would want to do that. So you have 10 minutes uh, until 11.29 or 10.29, uh, depending on which country you are in or time zone. And if you have any questions regarding this, uh, you just, just ask in the chat and I will answer them. See, Ritva is always already on one theme, hard work. Yes, it's, uh, but do you have anything spe specific hard work um, that you can do related or you can show related to your business? Someone specifically doing one thing. I don't know what kind of business you have. Maybe is someone chopping wood uh, or, yeah. Yeah, Petra, making a reindeer track. Yes. That is, uh, I think, a very good uh, tip or a behind the scenes um, content. Yeah, and uh, pro the tip about the mittens, not finger gloves. Very, very good tip. If I'm sure we're all here are familiar with the Arctic uh, conditions, but um, gloves are uh, yeah, gloves are not, finger gloves, no good <laughs> when it's cold. And Ritva, be in social media and be the foregoer. Yes, that is, a, of course, a very good tip that I would remember or re want everyone to be on social media. And I also recommend that you... Um, maybe write these down for yourself. And maybe you can also try to find your own, uh, your own theme that fits your brand, be it uh, a romance that your place is a romantic getaway, um, or maybe it's a place to find peace, etc. You can all adapt it to your story and who you guys are as a business. And of course, aimed towards your uh, customer segment or your target audience. I love that from Petra, the land of the business is run on is the birthplace of the honest mothers. That is a very good um, thing to share. And I'm sure your audience would appreciate it. And it's also giving you like that human element uh, or humanizing you, <laughs> I would say. And um, what hashtags do you suggest for the three themes of yours? Um, well, of course, that depends on your content, I think. Um, yeah, it very much depends on the, the content that you are creating. So it's, if it's, for example, if it's, um, let's see, providing tips, for example, if you're providing tips about the right way to take pictures of northern lights. Obviously, you'd use some uh, form of northern lights hashtags and something related to photography. Because when you're, um, your uh, hashtag survival of the fittest, yes, that is a very fun <laughs> hashtag. And I'm sure you'd also actually get um, Um, sorry, I was just distracted by, yeah, um, because hashtags, you have to think about, okay, what is the content that I am sharing? Um, and are there any hashtags related to that, that I can use, um, to make people find the content? And of course, you also want to think about your target audience. What kind of has hashtags would they be using?
Hello, but Rippa. I started my story as Mrs. Santa Claus Finland for six years ago since I saw Santa move from Kova to, to Rovaniemi. Now Mrs. Santa has an island residence on the islands of Icefold. Hi, Lutu. Uh, my story of Mrs. Santa is told basically in the web. I love that. I really think that's, that's a really fun story to tell. Because, uh, <laughs> I mean, Mrs. Santa must do something. <laughs> and actually about the hashtag uh, snow, that is something that we have uh, through research discovered that is used even though it's very general, but if you have, for example, Spanish or Italian tourists, that is a hashtag they often use uh, when they're searching for places to go uh, up north in the Arctic. So that is actually a very useful hashtag if you want to be found by guests that are from, for example, Southern Europe. I love that you guys are sharing so much in the chat now. Um, seems you have a lot of very good content that you can use. Again, I would recommend that you write it down so that uh, you can actually use it. Because um, that's some of the intention with the task is to actually make them useful to you. Uh, and I can, since I've been answering other questions, I can take your question too, Antje, if you're um, listening um, about the how to make you or how to listen to your audience. I would recommend, of course, that you look at what they're commenting. Maybe try to explore who is following you, and you can do this also through Facebook Insights, which I think Utili yeah, is going to talk about. Um, to just also see, okay, what what kind of content is getting the most views? Um, what what are the demographics, of course, of my, for example, Facebook followers or Instagram followers? Um, and I think on, for example, if you have uh, on Instagram, you can try to explore uh, what things that your um, followers have actually engaged with um, in with other people. Um, so I hope that is helpful to you. And if you if you didn't get it, I can try to just let me know and I will try uh, again to answer it if you are not here. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of uh, good content again coming in here. Um, thank you so much guys for sharing. Um, I think you should also remember to look at what other people are sharing because there's so much of uh, um, interesting things and enough value that you can also take inspiration from. I think you're all solving the uh, assignment of the task very well. And again, just write it down and you have some content for you uh, to use actually live, uh, which again is some of the point. Now you have uh, two, no, one minute left and then I will go and finish uh, or go on to the last part of this webinar um, as we only have a few minutes left. Hi, Luto is an island of ice balls. Okay, that sounds cool. <laughs> ice balls. So is it like snowballs made of ice or is it? I, this is really, I, maybe I should go and follow the link and uh, read the story. I think I need to read the story of Mrs. Claus after this. I love, Katja, that you, you've kind of following what I did with the, lamb, the rack 
of lamb kind of using the same subject in different ways um very good ideas but so now the time is here to but you can just uh where do you check the engagement statistics on instagram um you have a business suite app i would recommend uh, that you use that um you can download it from your app store uh, and then you will have both facebook and instagram insights uh, at that on that app and that is the best way to find statistics on instagram Let's see now um now that you have made uh well you started making content and i'd love for you guys to make more content in the form of videos and pictures and to make a plan uh, and that is just to do these things. This is like a checklist for you guys to create content again, to make things easier for you later. So make, uh, take pictures according to themes. And again, you should choose themes based on, uh, on your own story. You can of course use uh, the ones that I have suggested too, um, but create content for those. Uh, also using of course, what I talked about earlier with storytelling uh, and content marketing, create, a uh, folder with for pictures and videos and uh, maybe a word document uh, with text um, and uh, kind of prepare everything uh, ahead of time by themes according to themes and uh, then you can create a publishing plan which i will give you a brief example of on the next slide um, and you can decide okay on december the 8th i will have my story con uh, as a content on December the 12th, I will have uh, a give, provide tips, etc. And you can make as detailed or as general a plan as you'd like. And then, of course, when the day comes, you just pick from the folders, pick from the Word document, and you can create content uh, just like that. Then you have what you need uh, more easily accessible. So that is the strategy that I would suggest for businesses to use to kind of cheat a bit and make things ahead of time. But of course, I would always recommend that you always have fresh content too. So to make content on the spot. But if you make a bit of a plan, it's much easier. And using themes, it's easier to kind of have this uh, overarching story that's kind of using your brand strategy more effectively. And this is an example of how you can have a publishing plan. Of course, you will get these slides so uh, you can have a more close-up close, close -up look. Uh, and again, it can be as detailed as you want and it can be as general as you want. You can have just the dates, the story um, and uh, kind of the platform, or you can have, as we have here in the example, um, you can have uh, quite a lot of details, even having a budget and a checklist of whether it was done or not. So th this is something that I would recommend that you at least try uh, to again, make things easier for yourself. But last but not least, um, we need to remember most of all is, uh, even if I've given you all this information, told you what to do, you need to remember that you shouldn't try to be anyone but yourself. Um, so what is important that you should do what you feel comfortable doing. And of course, try to make uh, good content, uh, use stories, and of course, everything towards your target audience. But you need to be kind of, it needs to be your thing, <laughs> of course. And even though I I showed you an example of a quite tight publishing plan, you shouldn't feel pressured to follow the schedule perfectly because of course you're working with businesses or you are a business and um, things you know doesn't always go according to plan but to have this overarching plan could be a very helpful tool to uh, use in your daily life as a business and of course have fun i always have a lot of fun when i work with social media and storytelling. And I hope that you guys will also do that. 
Now it's time for questions. We have at least two minutes until uh, I think Otilia takes over. Um, I can just look at the comments. Um, yeah, Petra is also sharing advice. Um, you can go on Instagram as well. That is true. Uh, I think it just is easier to do it with Business Suite because it's then you have both Facebook and Instagram. Um, would there be something more fluent than a Word document and pictures matched? I mean, I'm sure you can find different kinds of tools to use online. Uh, I just mentioned the Word document because it's easier, um, or it's, it's quite, most people have Word and most people have folders. But of course, you can try to find some good tools to use um, that might work better or work more smoothly, of course. And of course, there are, um, there are apps uh, that you can use. Uh, yeah, there are apps you can use to, um, of course, you can to plan things or to, there are some that require you to pay for it, but I have some friends who work with um, social media who are using different kinds of app to, to plan everything they're publishing quite a long time beforehand um, and just putting all the content in these apps. But of course, um, they are paid for. So I know there is for not, they may not be for everyone to want to go that step and pay for something. And sometimes it's easier to just do the, the Word document and the folders. But there are definitely uh, apps or tools uh, out there uh, if you're interested. I can maybe do some research and have a look for you if you want to hear about those. I don't have anyone at the top of my head because we don't necessarily use them in our business because um, for a lot of the businesses we work with, it's too complicated, unfortunately. <laughs> but later it seems like a, a good app. I think it seems Otelia is in control, so maybe you should uh, ask, ask her. But uh, if anyone has any questions, I think uh, now the time is there, so Talia will be taking over. But I will stay around until the end of the webinar. So if you have any more questions, just feel free to ask. Yes. Uh, thank you, Ingrid. Thank you very much. It was very interesting uh, presentation. And I hope that uh, our attendees learned something new. Uh, so next, Atilia, uh, we have your crash course, like more practical part. Um, yeah, so welcome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Natalia. Um, I will take over. I have not prepared a um, presentation because I will be going through this live on screen. So um, it's a very practical crash course and uh, it will give you um, insight in whole, how to run audience analysis. And um, to start off, I would ask you a little bit about the level of um, detail I should go into because we got a few questions regarding oh where can I find insights and all this and before you um, run an audience analysis you also want to of course know if the content that you're already putting out is actually working so I will publish a poll now um, where I'm asking if you already know how to look at uh, Facebook and Instagram posts, for example, see if they are working, if you are familiar with the metrics that are available. So if I say, oh, the reach of your post is influenced by this, would you know what I'm talking about? Um, or are we, or should we just go directly to the advanced stuff or should we go cover these kind of basics first? And um, there we are.
I have five votes. Is that enough or <laughs> are people still thinking? I'm at nine votes and Yeah, we're we still waiting. Can I start sharing my screen? It looks like we're going for the advanced stuff as of now. Um, there is like seven advanced yeah. and six basic, but they mount, they're divided like um, quite evenly. Yeah. 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 Um, I just, I give a quick quick insight into just where to find and maybe a little bit um, about the insights while I do the tour. I think it should be it should be okay. I will keep it interesting. <laughs> um, I'll get going since uh, time is running out and I'm starting. I will be focusing on um, Facebook and Instagram and a little bit of Google Analytics as well, just to know whether or not the content that we're um, posting out is actually working, whether or not we're reaching the correct audience and also how to maybe if you're needing, for example, ideas for new posts or so to know what your audience is interested in. And that's the good thing with the digital world. It, uh, it's very, very um, insightful. And we have mentioned already a little bit of the tools, the Facebook business suit, maybe the creator suit. But um, I will start with the most basic insights that you get for your Facebook page. Um, and for your Facebook page, you actually have uh, the insights that are available here. You click on it just there. And there you have several kinds of insights available. And the most important ones that I want to um, cover today are the, uh, first of all, the um, Overview, of course, there you have a little bit about the actions on your page, page views, and um, how far the posts have reached. And that's always good to know, of course, for the success of your post, but it does not necessarily tell you so, so much about the audience. And if you want to know more about that, you can, for example, go to the People's tab. And there you see the basic demographics of your audience. You see whether or not you have women that are more interested or men that are more interested. You have the countries they come from and the main cities they come from. They, they, they also see the languages that they are running, which might be interesting if you're planning on having co um, content in different languages. So for example, um, content specifically for the local audience and content specifically for the international audience, um, that might be of interest to see how the languages are divided on your profile. You might have, if you have worked earlier with Facebook, um, you might now remember that the uh, audience insights were a lot more detailed that you could find um, about the interests of your audience there. That un feature, unfortunately, has gone since last July um, due to privacy concerns. So we have to be a bit more creative to find actually in-depth information about that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you have the basic demographic here, you can sort at the, the followers, whether it's the fans that have liked your face, the followers that follow your page, people that you have reached. And remember, reach means the posts that have seen your content. Um, that does not necessarily mean that they are already following you or something, since Facebook pushes this uh, content also to new user feeds all the time. And people that have engaged with your post means they have commented, they have liked, they have shared, they have reacted to it. And if you want to know a little bit more about the posts that you have been running here in the post tab, you see the general insights for only your Facebook posts. Later, when we go to the business suit and the creator studio as well, um, there you might be, you see the both Instagram and Facebook compared to each other, which is very interesting to see whether or not you're reaching the same audience on both platforms, or if, for example, you see there is a, a thematic difference that you should met, met, make in the content that you put out for them. 
Yeah, and there you see just the inside in which the reach, um, you can see that we have boosted this post, so it has a lot more reach than the other ones. Um, you can see the engagements, which is always good to know uh, whether or not this is just something that your people see, but it doesn't really speak to them, or if they actually get so enthusiastic about what they're reading that their post they're going to likes. Uh, also very interesting is the fans when they are online, because it's very important that you post at the time that the fans are actually active. And that's because the Facebook algorithm will take note of how quickly people start to interact with your post. That means if you get first uh, the first five minutes, like tons of likes, it will automatically increase the reach because it thinks this is a good content. If it takes hours before the first person reacts, it says, oh, this is really boring. So if you're posting, if we were to post at 6 p.m., for example, we would handicap ourselves. If we're posting at 9 a.m., we would have an uptrend coming and that would be really good. That also gives you a little bit about the days. So if you're planning to, uh, if you're running an editorial calendar, take a look at this. Tells you a little bit about the post types that are most interesting for your audience and how quickly they engage with them. And that's good to know um, a little bit how you how you should create your posts. Is it po videos that they're posts that they're after? Is it photos? Is it videos? And um, later, when we do look at the creator suite, we will see Facebook heavily pushes towards you putting out videos. Best insights you get actually for videos that you post. So keep that in mind. Um, another thing that I want to take a quick look at is the page views and just because it tells you a little bit about the devices that people have um, tried to look your page and we see that people on the computer make lots less of the page views that we get than people on mobile devices. So that means when we make content for our page, we should keep in mind that most of them will look at a mobile screen, make it mobile friendly. Um, the, I can take a quick look at the oh, well, Instagram we take later. Um, this is the page views simple. We have the business suite that you might be in, uh, familiar with already. Um, loads a little bit. Yeah, there we are. And here we see uh, for the first time together Facebook and Instagram if we have connected these accounts together. And if we see the audience report here, we'll see uh, that it's pretty much the same information that we're getting. That's the cities, that's the countries, um, and it's the age and the gender, both for Instagram and both for the Facebook. And we see that women, men, women, men are pretty much the same for both of our accounts and that the age groups are um, also quite alike. So it might be that we're just, you know, meeting the same people that people have followed both of our accounts or that it's just the content speaks to the same audience. Um, on the business suite, we have also a possibility to compare the content that we post and there we might see, um, again, that's interesting for us if we see that the same audience is reached on both do they react the same to the content? Is it really the same audience or is it just the same gender and the same age group, but really the people have different interests? You see, for example, um, the reach here is not necessarily as interesting as the likes that we get for the posts, for example. And of course, make sure that you filter out, um, for example, the boosted posts, they would skewer your data a little bit. Um, I'm seeing that Ingrid is answering as well. I'm just continuing here if that's fine and take questions in the chat later as well. Yeah, um, in the content, we have a nice insight for the, no? No, okay, we take that in there. It's a little bit difficult to work with the Facebook Business Suite and Creator Studio. Not everything works all the time. Unfortunately, they're changing it quite a few. So I might just take this later and show you the insight on the posts in the Creator Studio. Um, what we have in the Business Suite is a lot of tools that are um, 
for example, important if you work with the paid ads, if you want to create, I don't know, campaigns or something that you're willing to pay for. And especially the audience function here can be interesting to see, to check for interests also for organic posts. And um, because you do not actually see any longer or nearly not at all see um, which interests your audience has, you can try to test for it by creating an audience and giving you an, a certain idea. And I show you just quickly how to do it. Um, mm -mm. So for example, if you say, hmm, I might want to take, uh, I don't know, hire a photographer and make a video about horseback riding. Is this something that my audience is interested in or should I invest the money for the photographer rather in a whale tour, for example? And this you can do by creating a saved audience and just checking because it will give you um, an estimated audience size. That means people that are interested, for example, if you focus about the interests. And I would not pick a very high location or very um, like uh, general location. I would go a little bit more into details. And here it makes sense that you have a look at the cities where your people come from. Um, so if you go for the audience here and see, for example, that uh, Finland, Tornio, Finland is one of the biggest or your most successful cities. So it might be a good sample size to check if the people in Tornio, Finland would be interested in this. And so you put in here. No. From your Finland and you say, for example, our age group would be 35 to 45, 54. Um, let me check this here. 32. And then we, for example, check for horseback riding. And then it would show us that in Finland, in the near location, in the location uh, with the P in the age group that we have selected interest for horseback riding, we would reach around 2,000 to 3,000 people if we were to run an ad for this. So there actually is some interest there. Um, and if you have done this for a while, you will get an, a, a, yeah, you can, for example, compare whether or not the whale tour would get a bigger audience. Um, and that gives you a certain idea of the level of interest that is for a specific topic in your audience. It's not super specific, but um, if you have to decide, for example, in which campaign to invest or in which topic or which content, um, it can give you a hint which, uh, which topic would give you the better results. Yeah, um, in the Facebook business suit, you also, I'm just closing this, you also have the Creator Studio Cult tool. And this is um, basically the Creator Studio, yeah, where you can either create posts, but also monitor both Facebook and Instagram. You can see that you switch these here. And there you can filter after um, videos, after photos, after stories, um, and get insights here. And for some reason, it does not open these for me. So I'm just showing you in the Instagram uh, account itself where you can find these. Um, for example, if you're clicking on one of the stories here, the three points up, and you view the insights. And it gives you profile visits, how many people have actually visited your profile afterwards, how many have started following you, and the navigation. And for stories, that's quite interesting to see whether or not the content was engaging or if people just, you know, tapped forward, 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 because it wasn't really if they put to the account, to the next story of another account, or if they left the stories completely. So these are negative interactions. Um, this is might be that it's um, just because the, they were done seeing this and have read the text. Back usually means that it was a nice slide beforehand. So especially if there wasn't like a huge amount of text that people might not have been able to read and they had to go back. Um, if it was a video or something, then you notice that um, people were actually engaging and they wanted to see it again. So this is quite a useful thing to look at. Yeah, in the Creator Studio on the Facebook side, of course, you see also um, 
the videos, for example, that you have posted here with the likes and the comments and everything. And then Facebook, you get a lot more detailed insights. Um, and we spoke, I mentioned it already before, videos are the best thing that you can post. They give you the most detailed insights. Um, and if you go, you see already that you have the minute viewed, that you have the one minute views, the three second views, and um, the returning views, that means people that came back to watch it again. And three seconds views is basically if somebody meant, saw it on the, um, on, the, on the feed and scrolled through, but didn't really watch it. So what you're after is one minute views. And that means um, that also the Facebook algorithm values one minute views very highly as something that actually engages the people. So the more one minute views you get, the further it will expand your reach. So this is something to watch out for. Um, another very, very good thing about the posting a lot of video is that it will give you access to the most detailed audience insights that you can get on Facebook. As you can see, we start out with the normal age and gender reviews, and then we get to the good stuff because here you get um, uh, would you get insights about the interests. You even would get other videos that your engaged viewers have watched, um, which might give you a pinpoint of, for example, which trends are out there what you might want to talk about, and other pages that your engaged viewers like, which means that um, you get an, you know, what are they otherwise interested in, gives you an idea of who you're talking to. That can be also filtered for engaged viewers. That means that commented, shared, liked, reacted, one minute viewers, new followers, or after total followers. And it takes quite a while to amass a big enough data set for Facebook to unlock this for you. And you have to do it in the past seven days or so the past 14 days. And that can be a little bit of a, of a difficulty <laughs> if you don't have the time to actually post like every other day, every third day. What you can do is try to um, mine a little bit for these engagements. And you can't actually do engagement biting, like never ask your audience to, oh yeah, like my post, share my post, comment on this post, neither in the text nor in the audio of the, um, of the video if you post it because this is count as spam for Facebook and the uh, algorithm will stop or decrease your reach. It will not put it out so much. What you can do, however, is have one minute views. And there you can say, you know, um, try to make it natural, of course, that you don't disturb the post, but try to get people to stay for one minute. For example, say, oh yeah, you know, in the first uh, minute or so, I will talk about this as an introduction. And after that, we go to the first topic and make it the most interesting thing. So you know that they will stay, even though the introduction might not necessarily speak to them that much. But generally, it is best have the most important content as quickly and as early as in the video as possible to make them stay longer. Um, for each video, you also can see which is very useful if you want to evaluate, for example, um, the, um, no, published here we are, um, where people stop watching. For example, if you see that a video performed much worse than um, all the other videos, or you want to see why, what, what happened there, is there anything, that I should watch out for. I can dismiss this. Um, no. Yeah. As you can see, sorry, it's uh, it's frozen at the moment. It's kind of hard to see, um, to work with it. And here we are, there we are. Um, this will show you how the post has performed hourly and how people are watching when it is done loading. And that means where in the video the people, for example, have brought, uh, gone off. So you can see um, if you built a video, if it was built correctly, or if it might have been better to put other content up front. So that's, um, that gives you a certain pinpoint if you analyze this video regularly, how you can build up your content. Nah. There we are. 
Um, and of course, it gives you again the country and age and gender for each video as well. And the last feature I want to talk to, since we are nearing the end of this, um, is a really, really nice tool that's called post testing. And it's here in the, um, and this allows you to test up to four different versions of a post against each other. That means if you're unsure, if you're putting the right picture up front, if you should try another headline, you can do this. And I made one actually as a preparation, just to give you an overview of what can be done. Um, I made a, a little advertisement for this webinar and I put, I tested four different versions. I put one where Ingrid was the first one and that has the same text, these three, um, one with the strategic storytelling and one where I just posted the link. And then I put the same image, but I put a little bit different text. As you can, if you speak Norwegian, you will see that I started with a much more emotional headline um, than the, uh, the free webinar that I did, used for everything else. And now we can see that this post was the most, uh, the best performing. You can see that the reach was the highest, that people clicked actually the link, but the post that had the emotional headline got actually some reactions, which none of the other versions did. So this is something that can give you, um, depending on whether you want to have them click on the link or if you want to actually engage with them, for example, have them answer, this is where you can test this. You can decide how long you want to test and um, then you can decide which of the posts you actually want to show on your timeline. And this will be shown to uh, your audience, both your own followers and the other audience on um, Facebook, but it will not only the top performer of the post that you choose will actually show up in your timeline later. And that's definitely if you want to boost the post, if you want to spend a little bit of money on an advertisement, test it beforehand to make sure that you get the best return on investment. And if you are still looking for your tone of voice, if you want to see how um, your followers react, for example, to different uh, ways to formulate something, test, test, test. Yeah, we have, um, it's 11 now. Uh, I will give you the analytics. It's a little bit, always make sure that you use Google Analytics. I'm just going quick look into it. Um, if you want to, you can have an audience analysis here as well. But in this case, you would need to add, um, it pops up here as well. You need to include this in your cookie um, before you can actually, in your cookies on your webpage, before you can enable it. But these are very useful. If you want to make sure that you are talking to the right audience, um, it's very, very good because your ultimate goal when posting on Instagram or Facebook will probably be to drive traffic to your website or web shop. So make sure that. Um, when you are when you post something on Instagram and Facebook, that it actually not only they click like and interact, but maybe that they go to your website. So this is one of the most um, important success metrics for most of them. And there we can see, for example, whenever we post it on Instagram, of course we see the spikes, and that's good because then we know that the content actually worked as we wanted to. And if you are going into behavior at some point and see the behavioral flow, you can even see whether or not you managed to get users that were actually interested in your Facebook or your website and where they went from there. So, for example, we see that um, everybody we got from Facebook sometimes dropped off, dropped off the from Instagram, for example, would go on. And we see that this is the more valuable audience for us. That was a really, really short crash course. A lot of this will be going into more details throughout the upcoming webinars. So if this was interesting, follow uh, the webinars that are coming as well. We will talk more about this. OK, um, if there's if you have a few more minutes, if you want to ask some questions, I am happy to hang around a little bit and answer anything that you might want to know. There is Auntie is typing, so we can wait. And uh, while we're waiting, there was a question about a, a slide. So um, I answered to the chat box. So I hope that uh, it worked. Just let us know if you could not download. This. Thank you. 
Yeah, I think it was very interesting and useful, the webinar. And uh, definitely, at least me, I'm going to watch it again, the recording. And maybe in some sometime just pause it and think more. Mm. Uh, yes, yeah, the webinar is recorded uh, and you will get the recording out automatically after the webinar ends. So actually very soon you will get it. Um, yes. Thank you, Marie. You also have, an, have a nice day. Please give us feedback. You will get the link. <laughs> And also, of course, um, you can reach us on our social media profiles if you have any questions to everything that was said before or in, during the webinar. If you want some to engage with us, we're always happy to talk. We're always happy to answer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would definitely like to learn more about leading statistics. OK, so yeah. maybe really we will plan our next webinars. Let's see. That will actually be the um, the next webinar will focus on content and how it works for different social media um, channels, get a bit more into the specifics there, also more than just maybe Facebook and Instagram. And the third webinar um, will fo focus a lot on how to read these kind of statistics and how which metrics to work out for and how to do basically data driven um, content management. So the third webinar will be focusing on this a lot. Yeah, so follow us on social media and uh, stay tuned. Of course, we will make a post about the webinar upcoming. And uh, when you registered for this webinar, if you mark that you want to get uh, information about the project, you will be added to the emailing list and we will send you also information about activities. Yes, thanks. Thanks, Petra. Um, yeah. I'm yeah. Agree. Yeah, the great knowledge. Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ingrid. It was really nice to meet you. So thank you for having me. I've had a great time. Thank you to all the participants me uh, too. for sharing me in the chat. You, uh, you're doing a great job, and I hope you have uh, you can use what you learned today uh, in the future. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Atelia. We will be in, in the contact. <laughs> yes. Of course. Yes. All right. OK. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Bye. And see you soon, hopefully, next yeah. webinar. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.